Yeah. Yeah. Giving you a little more last week, huh? Yeah, I know. Every single week is a lyrical. Who is this boy, little Lord? Now I'm ready to go. That's your part, Tana. Santana Mall Show Podcast, episode 10. 10. Man, we in double digits. Wow. That's crazy, right? Ooh. I remember I remember you asked me to do this, and I was like, yeah, man, you know, you my boy. We, we'll knock it out of the box. But 10, though. 10 later. 10. 10. We keep them clean. They ain't 20s, but we keep, yeah, them, we clean. keep them clean. Travis Thomas, Santana Moss, and hold up. Give me drum roll. I like when you do the drum roll. <laughs> One of the most electrifying football players of all time. Boop, 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 boop. CP, are you with me? Clinton with Portis you, in the house. Hold on. Let me get my Clinton Portis on. Yo, put your shades on, let man. Let me get smooth with him. CP, stunner shades. Hey, you, you probably can't see me right now. Okay, Travis. <laughs> You're right. Let me take these What's off. What's up, my brother? I'm cooling, man. What's good? Hey, man, I just want to tell you thank you. Before we get into this, um, make sure we got the production company, I mean, uh, boys back then in the back end, they bleeping everything out. No I know CP. doubt. Hey, he keep it real, though. I, we were talking about before we came on this podcast. We won't say any names, but we'll just say the first time I met him, yeah. we did a show on uh, NBC Sports Washington called Shop Talk. Shop Talk. And CP kept it really real. Matter of fact, one thing I like about y'all Miami boys, I will say this, because, you know, Tanner brought me around a lot of y'all. Y'all just keep it so real. Like, what you see is what you get with y'all, and I appreciate that about y'all. You're always yourself. Doesn't matter where you are. You know, some people put on fronts, depending where they at. One thing about CP and Tanner, I can say, y'all are always yourself. It's just something to you any good to change, you know right. what I mean? Like, butt kissing for what? These people forget about you regardless. No matter what you do, no matter how grateful you are or appreciative, people going to forget about you. If you're not doing anything for them, it's like the hell with you. So why why, why must I go outside of my character, change who I am to appease you? That's yeah. one of the things he don't change his character. I don't see yeah. a lot of character changes. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, we've all <laughs> seen a lot, of a lot of characters, changes. but he don't change. And no, that's one of the things that, you know, that I've always liked about CP. You know, a lot of people get rubbed wrong by CP, but when you know him, you be like, well, that's CP. That's how he rock. Now watch him go out here and ball. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. So people ask you all the time, man, like, you know, damn, what's up with Porters? And you ask yourself, I mean, you ask them, like, what's up with him? You know, like, you know, what is it that you don't, you want to you want to know or what is it that you don't like right and he's been a guy man I, I used to scratch my head about how he gets it done and i then i found out that oh he's the one that can only do what he does you know right. what i'm saying yeah. and so me and cp man we don't we have tons of stories i know we're going to get into that but that's one of the things that i can always say about him to this day when i when i'm walking around when people bring up you know the greats of you know our past and uh, and 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 redskin history and they talk about Porters the way they talk about him. Right. They say, you know, give us a story about Porters. And I say, man, I'm gonna tell you this. I seen a guy come to practice many a days when flats. When I call flats, them tennis shoes. He ain't got no, <laughs> got no nubs underneath them. And I look at his feet and I say, Porter, what you doing today? I'm resting today, buddy. And I'm like, how? Like, you know, and he's like, you'll see. And 164, 200, almost 200 some yards later every Sunday, every other Sunday, you like, man, you know, you scratch your head. Like, what is it in him that drives him? So I'm glad you always stay who you are, true to who you are, and that's why I consider that, you know, we've been boys from day one because you you honestly, you know, trust the guy that's going to always be himself. I want to go there because I, I want to get when you guys first met because you were born in Mississippi, right? But you grew up born in, in Laurel, Mississippi. You grew up in Gainesville, Florida? Gainesville, Give me your Florida. life story, CP. <laughs> so I was born in Laurel, Mississippi, uh, moved away, you know, just uh, family. My cousin ended up getting killed, my mom. Uh, packed us up. We moved to Florida with my uh, stepdad. And, and, you know, I grew up in Florida. You know, it was a shift. It was a transition for me. So uh, I moved to Florida going to seventh grade. So I finished out in Gainesville uh, right down the street from the University of Florida. Wow. Um, you know, I mean, what's crazy is me and Tanner had never met. But that previous year, track, mm -hmm. they broke they broke the record mm -hmm. at, at UF. And I was there, yeah. you know, like – uh, to see their 6A, our track girls, our track team in high school had that work. Like, yeah. and they ran into <laughs> and they ran into ten of them at the track them meet. Chiefs. But, yeah, wow. they they were live. You know what I mean? But it's it's crazy how everything worked out because when me and Tana got introduced, I, my host for 
my visit to the University of Miami was Kenny Kelly. And, you know, he was kind of like L7. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I just told Kenny, I was like, man, get 10 of my per diem. Like, I'm kicking it with them. Wow. You know what I mean? So, uh, I think Kenny dropped me off. We was at James Jackson House. Yeah. And me and Tanner got, you know, me and Tanner got, got, got going and, um, the rest I lost a thousand dollars to a to a seventeen year old. <laughs> How did that happen? We went to gambling, and then I'm like, "This motherfucker here, <laughs> man! I lost a thousand dollars." I'm like, "You know, what? let's go in there and get them for this money." <laughs> <laughs> we we get me and him amongst each other. I'm like, "That motherfucker hustler." Hey, you know? everybody, what's crazy? Is everybody had kind of left and, and went into the house. Me and Tanner was on the balcony, just me and him. We just get like, sure "Hey, look, that's fate. Let me throw these things." Wow, down. you know what I mean? But. Uh, you know, just to team up, man, I think Tanner was such a crucial part in me coming to the University of Miami and, and him uh, along with Ed, you know, just some of the stuff that you get um, out of those guys, you know, and, and Tanner probably don't even remember, but his excitement about what was on University of Miami roster was like a huge thing that made me want to be a part of it. Like, oh man, we got so many guys just ready to get a, get a turn. Like, we mm-hmm. hungry. Like, hey, we gonna be the next to blow. You know what I mean? Like, wow. his eagerness and excitement about Reggie Wayne and Najee Davenport. Like, people the world didn't know about because, I mean, they were just overshadowed and young. Mm-hmm. You know, the Ed Reeds of the world. Tanner was excited about that in '99. Yeah. You know, so. Um, but UF at that time was balling too. So what? How close were you to going there, oh, or was that. it Miami oh, from share the with him, share with him that U.S. Was, story? Was yeah, it Miami it, from the break for you, or were you, was it close to U.S.? No, nah, it was actually Maryland was the Come lead on, dog CP. for me. Come on, CP. Man, wow. Maryland was the lead dog for me because my best friend was already at Maryland. He he came out uh, the year prior. So Maryland was after me. Maryland probably sent a coach down twice a week, and I don't even think you were supposed to send a coach twice a week. Mm-hmm. Like, Every day I had numerous calls, messages, like the way Maryland was recruiting me. But, you know, the University of Florida was had already screwed over my best friend because he was signed. He was a lot to go to the University of Florida at the time. And, you know, the last minute they, they took Todd Johnson and left him out to dry from Sarasota uh, Riverview. So they took Todd Johnson and left him scrambling. So it was already a bitter taste right. to me with, with University of Florida. But – I remember University of Florida calling me up, and it was, it was Spurrier Jr. Like, hey, Clinton, we're thinking about offering you at DB. What do you think? And I said, I think you should call somebody else and hung up the phone. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not playing DB. I don't want to play DB. <laughs> for you. I want to play running back. And, um, you know, I mean, go down to the University of Miami, and we were just, you know, I was just with some more Canes. Uh, recently I was with Delvin and Coach E. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went out to the little cigar lounge, and we were talking about – our Friday nights at Shoeless. Yeah. And I was like, and wings. we had to have, we talked about the wing contest. <laughs> the like, sauce. Bro, everybody had to make their sauce. The wide receivers, the RBs, the DBs, everybody had to make this little special sauce. It was like honey, ketchup, hot sauce, hot sauce and mustard. Dab of mustard. Dab of mustard. Yeah. Dab of mustard. And it, it was like, bro. it was different. It was like your own barbecue taste. sauce. Right. It was different in taste contingent upon how much you put in it. Wow. So everybody thought their stuff was popping. And after we eat all the wings, everybody came to our room. Like mm-hmm. it was our crew was me, yeah. Tanner, Andre Johnson, Philip yeah. Buchanan, oh my God. Ethnic Sands, Larry, the Weaver Twins. You know, like we, our room was popping. Yes. And, and J-Boy was in the room cutting hair. So everybody came yeah. to in the, the room. room cutting the hair. Bro. Oh, man, you Dang. get your cut the night before the game. Woo! We had the dice game going dice on. Game we had the card, card game, game going on. on. You got the barbershop. We flipping the beds. Yeah, wow. we'll, yeah, we'll move the beds out of the way. Like, bro, our Friday night, <laughs> it, the coaches used to come in, the strength coach. Man, the they're coming in and see what's going on. Coach. And come like, hang at. Man, it was, it was Comedy Central. Like, wow. bro, our Friday nights, by the time we got on the field, on, and this is what – no alcohol, no, no mm-hmm. anything. Just like yeah. this is just yeah. people talking noise, like, and we were just talking about the buildup. Like everybody talk about the University of Miami and how glorified and how how everyone carries himself, right. and no one really understands like the disconnect between all of those teams. Like mm-hmm. our crews was like, yeah. hey, look, this is our crew. Like I'm 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 kicking it with Tanner. I'm kicking it with Dre. We ain't really kicking with nobody yeah, else. Right. And when we played basketball, it was like you played basketball with your crew. Yeah. And the competition was in everything. Like 
the day we get out and put our hands on the line is the day that me and town are in competition. Like, oh, no, nah, Porters, what you doing running with the receivers? Like, right. no, nah, you get over there with, like, them yeah. people can't compete with me. I'm over here with town and Philip Buchanan and yeah. Andre Johnson. Like, these are my partners, but go this is it. my competition. Go and, you know, I'm looking at them and they're looking at me. I remember we finished, like, one, two, three, four in the 60 in Big dad. East. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Just straight competition. Crazy, I didn't bro. even run the 60. You know Crazy. what I mean? Like, we just took those kind of challenges, which made us excel uh, even more. All right, let's jump to the NFL. So you get drafted by the Denver Broncos. Take me back to that time period. I often talk to Tanner on this show about, because I like knowing where, where brothers' mentals are at a certain point in time. Take me back to you're a Denver Bronco, you're in the league, you're getting that check. Where were you at mentally Man, at that I'm gonna time? Man, I'm take you frame. back before that. Like, <laughs> you talking about getting the check. You better tell, you hey. better tell us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's the wrong person talking about Uh-oh. money with. <laughs> wrong person talking about money with. One thing about money, man, you can always get money. You just got to have the know-how. You know, people people look at your ups and downs, and, you know, they really want, want you to stay down. People don't want to see you in that place. Never want to see you, though. You've never, like, I've never been worried about money. I went through the issues that I went through. Like, I took L's that I shouldn't have took. I took L's for a lot of people. I never threw them people under the bus. Like I took my L's, cool, let's patch it up and move on. But when you when you talk about getting to the NFL, first off, I went to the Denver Broncos. I walked out of the Denver Broncos mean. Like I sat down with Bobby Turner in in Indianapolis and it was late. You know, you have long days in India at Combine. I sit down with Bobby T and, and the Broncos, um, Ted Sunquist, everybody sitting around. And I'm like Man, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. Like, what y'all got me in here for? Y'all got 3,000-yard backs on your roster. You're not drafting a running back. And you, they had Terrell Davis, Mike Anderson, and Orlandis Gary yep. all on the roster. Mm. All of them had rushed 4,000 yards. Like, yeah. you're not drafting a running back. So they looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, what pick y'all got? It was like 19 or something. Man, I'm not even going to be around when y'all draft. Like, I felt like I was the third pick in the draft. And I told, you know – I just posted this on draft day about Arthur Blank sitting down with, with the Atlanta Falcons and Arthur Blank said, hey, kid, you know, where do you think you're going to go in this draft? I'm three. And he was like, ha, ha, I love your confidence, but where do you really think you're going to go? I said, well, Detroit Lions got the third pick. I understand the Houston Texans taking David Carr. It was a new franchise. They sure. needed a quarterback. At number two, Julius Peppers, a hometown kid yep. in Carolina. I understood – and number three, I'm the best player. I'm, and I told him, I said, man, I'm going to win rookie of the year. Like, is nobody going to be better than me? Straight like that. And they laughed at me. It was like, oh, kid, we, we like your confidence. Like, yeah, 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 ha, ha, ha. They took Joy Harrington. Ugh. They mm. took Joy Harrington. And Damn. if you go back and you look at that draft, the two people that I would, I would put ahead of me in that draft, Julius Peppers, who yeah. went number two, Hall of and Famer, Ed Reed, Hall of Famer. Them the two, the two locks to the Hall of Fame. Yep. At number three, and no matter how you want to look at it, for my time, I played for the time that I was on the field. Man, I don't see anybody hands down. My numbers don't lie. Like people looking, oh, they look at the Zorn years and then the years sure. where I just didn't give a damn. I told Tanner. With Zorn, like, man, you know, I'm over this. Tanner thought I was playing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this nigga like tripping, Tanner man. just thought I was What'd playing. What'd he say, Tanner? I'm, I'm going to this shit. Going where? Like, <laughs> you know, hey, you know, me and Porter have plenty of talks. Some of the talks I can't share. But <laughs> <laughs> that one talk there, hey, man, I'm, I'm done with this. Okay, yeah, all right, Porter, I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Next day is the same attitude, but so where you going? So, I, cause I want to know. Yeah, it ain't nothing better than you right now on this team. So, yeah, now nah, he's not lying. I mean, it's Damn. one of those things. But I want to chime in on that because I remember him coming out, and I remember being already in the NFL and talking to guys. Most of the time, the guys at the U go back to the you know the pro days. You you know how you know how it is. We come to the pro days to see the guys that we play with, see what they do. I didn't get a chance to go back down to the pro day. All I remember getting a call and say, man, Porter just ran a 4-2 something. Oh. <laughs> and I remember when I ran my 4-2. Yeah. And everybody was like, Tell you gonna you gonna work out? No, nah, I'll come back yeah. in 30 days and I'll run some routes. Right. And the, the scouts looked at me crazy. So Porters, when you ran that 4-2, did that make cause you know, normally they tell us we run a good 40. And after what you did on the field, it's a wrap. For what, three, two years, two and a half years? That's a lock. 
first round pick. That's the lock, man. You proving yourself. Where were your mind at after you ran your forty? Man, this is what's so crazy, right? Um, when the mindset hit me, you know, my junior year, uh, I called Edge up. I was like, E, you know, like I'm thinking about going to lead. What I need to do? He said, send in your paperwork. They're gonna send you around, you know, a draft status back, and then your last five games you have to ball out. Right. Right. He said, Your last five games you have to ball out. Cool. I sent in my, my paperwork. It came back second round grade. But the last five games, they said you have to ball out. We played five ranked five consecutive ranked teams. Oh boy. And I probably put up 700 yards in those five games. Halftime work. Mm. That's what people don't understand. I never played. I never played. We had I many. never got that pickup work. Yeah, we had too many. I ones. was the first one trying to lead the game. After I go out, when I get 101, if I got 10 carries for 101 yards, hey, Frankie G, come stand over here beside Coach Sal. Right. I'm about to run out of the game or I'm about to play like something wrong with me. You run on the field yeah, so you could take over. Wow. CP, you ain't going to do it. Watch this. Stand beside coach. I step on the back of my shoe. Oh, oh, hey, Frank, get in, get in. <laughs> Frank run on the field. 50 yards. Coach, what I need to go back in for? Mm -hmm. Frank got this. Feeling. But CP was that same guy. Wow. CP was that same guy that I told stories about plenty of times that we in games and James Jackson go down or, or Najee get a breather. And I come in and CP in the huddle, and I look at him. I look up in the huddle, like I know, you know, I know my personnel, so I, I like to look. And and you might not notice I'm looking or watching, but I know who can hit the home runs. And I'm like, oh, he got this homie motherfucker in here right now. He finna jump one. I remember us playing the Gator Bowl. We was playing against Georgia Tech, and it was late in the game. And we had undid our thing with Georgia Tech. At the time, they had the quarterback that was Joy all Hamilton. world. Hamilton, he was doing his thing the Joy whole time in the ACC. And, is white. and, bro, oh, I, I tell you this. I looked in the huddle, and I saw Clinton Porter's in the huddle. I'm like, this young man, he, 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 he might jump one. Tell saw him, it. don't chill backside. Shit, my backside was my front. My backside was front side with him. Right. I don't know what the play was called. I can't remember that far. It was but all lead. I remember, that boy... I look, I peeked back, and I seen him coming. I said, yeah, I knew it. I said, I knew it, because I saw him in the huddle, and I'm like, man, don't sleep. He might jump it. And I remember just stepping in front of that safety, and CP went caught my back, and I just put my hands up and say, man, I'm going head over to the side. Our backfield, whether it was in the backfield, whether you was a receiver, tight end, we had so many backups to where people hungry. They see you out there eating, they want something. He was the guy from day one. That he competed. He he competed with James Jackson. Jackson was our starting running back. And from the mic from the kickoff classic in Giant Stadium, yeah. those boys making bets on the sideline who's gonna have the most yards. Hey, no, true story, <laughs> right? James Jackson, my first first game ever, we standing on the sideline. James Jackson walk up to me and say, I bet you I have a fifty yard run in my first three carries. It's nowhere here. We playing Ohio State. So oh. I bet you I have a fifty yard run in my first three carries. Hundred dollars. Bet. First carry, three yards. Second carry, 51-yard touchdown. Wow. Straight up. I'm straight up. Like, I'm just like, like this hold on. Man and and I'm, the, I'm the middle man. They came to me with it. Tanner, it's a bet. 50 yards in my first wow. three carries. Wow. All right, I'm listening. All right, man. You're Come like, on, whatever. man. Yeah. I'm mining to this game. Right. And I'm like, these jokers hit on. They don't stop. CP like, ooh, I'm going to get this money, boy. I'm going to get this money. <laughs> And that joker on the sideline, hey, you know how JJ he was, run. Wow. He on the sideline. I look, I'm searching for CP. Like, do you see this shit going hey, on? Wow. He, was, he was out of there, man. Yeah. Like, we had so many, you know, just to get back to what Tanner was saying about the uh, pro day. So, they tell me in five games, and then I'm hearing everything that I can't do right. for pro day. They said I couldn't catch. You know, I was just going to be a third down back, and I had deceptive speed, but they thought I would run like a 4-4. Four -four. Now, mind you, I don't I don't lift weights at all. Ain't so like every everybody talk like bench pressing and all of this. I can go squat. I can go put your car on my back and walk down the street with it. But I couldn't lift these water bottles. You make me do ten curls with these water <laughs> right. bottles. It was something wrong with that. Like I just wasn't. I didn't like that diesel buffness. Right. It made me stiff. So um, we get in. I was only benching, and Swayze didn't play. Right, like, yeah. our strength coach was the real deal. You know what yeah. I mean? Bro, I lifted 185 the entire time. 
And Swayze will tell you, like, Swayze used to get mad. Swayze, I am not going up. I'm not changing anything when it comes Keep to bench press. I'm going to lift 185. Yep. I'm going to do the 10 reps or the right. 8 reps or the 6 reps that you got me doing. That's what I'm doing. Right. Like, we just had to understand. But nobody is going to beat me in anything. Sure. Like, or knock you out when he come his way. That's what you had to right. do with Swayze. You had to prove if I'm gonna if I'm gonna take this step back, like you need to prove to me you capable of carrying this load. Sure. Like Swayze was Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. That was a workout. No if ands, buts about it. Right. Me and Philip Buchanan are the only two people because Phil was my right hand man yeah. that I go talk Swayze into. Hey Swayze, me and Phil gonna come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we can leave out Thursday. We going to Tallahassee. We going to Atlanta. We right. going to kick it. Right. So you got to work with us. Yep. Everybody else got Friday morning runs. Me and Phil unfinished on Thursday. Our day is done at eleven o'clock when we finish. Airport, like or ah. jump in the car. We out of here. So we get to this point leading up. You know, Swayze tell us we not running that combine. That that's not when we're gonna peak. He said y'all y'all schedule set up to peak next week. Right. So I get up at combine. I'm not participating in number interviews. Next week, University of Miami. Man, them people looking at me crazy. We get to pro day. Everybody talking about 40 times. First time I ever got under 225, I hit it eight times. Bam, 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 bam. Eight times. Now, you talking about Saquon Barkley just benched 32, 33 right, times. Yeah. I lifted this eight times. When I stood up, I was like, that's a lot. <laughs> like, everybody talking about my 40 time. I knew I could run. I bench pressed 225 eight times right. the first time I ever got under. Right. That's a lot. Like, yeah. I just proved to you that I don't see any of these people. Like, my vertical was like 39. All the other stuff was good. We get out and run. Everybody on the line. Philip Buchanan was my roommate. Tanner had just left. Broke all the records when it came to running. So every time you walk past, you see Santana Moss 20, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. It's a lot, Tana. Like every record. You know what I mean? So you still competing because I still got to hear Tana Mouth. Right. I still got to talk yeah. to Tana. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? Yep. So you walk by, and I'm just like, you know what? It's time. You know, me and Phil got the, the friendliest competition of all times. Like, Phil got to beat me in everything, and I got to beat him in everything. Right. Phil get out, Philip run, and Philip like Philip Buchanan is probably Philip Buchanan one of my favorite players. That was the only player I ever seen cover Santana in the slot. Out of all this, all the years I played with him, Philip Buchanan was the only player I seen cover Santana in the slot and Great run player. with him, like back the ball down and jog back to the huddle. Great type. player. So I'm sitting here looking at Phil. Phil take off running. It seemed like Phil like jumped the gun he was moving so fast. It, I don't think he, he took no like I don't think Phil took number like 15 steps and he was done. So I'm looking like, man, what the like what he just run? I get in the blocks like I'm competing with Phil. Yeah. And I come out of the block, you know, I come out of my stance, pop, take off. I come past the finish line. I don't know what I ran. I walk back, EJ standing there. <laughs> I asked, I said, E, what I run? He said um, he said it don't. He, no, <clears throat> he was like uh, four two. So put your clothes back on. You done. So then I told you. <laughs> I said what? <laughs> he was like, don't do nothing else. You just ran. Uh, Andy Reid got Same you advice. at this, and Romeo Cornell or somebody got you at this. He said put your clothes back on. But I'm determined to prove to these people I can catch. Right. Because everybody's Said questioning you couldn't catch. my hands. Like, uh. So they put me and Jeremy Shockey over here. And, bro, they, they probably made me run 50 routes. I was 50 for 50. Woo. I was 50 for 50. I'm talking about one hand over the shoulder falling. It didn't matter. I just catch like, I just catch like this instead of like but naturally. What people, right. people feel to realize about different. you is that. Everything was a gamble to you. It was a challenge. It was a challenge. Like, if it so, wasn't no pressure so on me. If it wasn't no pressure, you weren't going to respond. Right. And it was always pressure. So you looked at everything. So that just made him, you know, who he is. Right. You know what I mean? Clinton has been that guy. When the pressure's on, sometimes pressure, we, we always heard pressure bust pipe. Yes, sir. No, nah, pressure, pressure. he could turn pressure into diamonds. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? He that's what that. he was that he guy. He that. wanted that pressure because he was going to want it. He had a thing to prove. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Clint, from day one, he wanted to prove his point. And his point was always seen and heard because if you didn't see it, he's going to let you know it. You know what I'm saying? So eventually you end up with the Broncos. 
Is, did you not want to be there, or you didn't care you were in the NFL? Nah, see, this is what it was. I was angry. Right. I was angry for my first three or four years in the NFL because every team that passed it over me, I needed to prove to them that you passed over me. So when I got to Denver, Denver was a like Denver was golden, man. Like having an opportunity to play with Rod Smith, Shannon Sharp, yeah. Al Wilson, like those Freaks. are some of my favorite teammates. Freaks. You know, like I, maybe I don't talk about Denver enough, but when you look at the likes of Al Wilson, John Mobley, like that was so family oriented. Yeah. Dwayne Coswell, like John Mobley, like Ian Go. These people were so family oriented because they had just they had just won a Super Bowl. Right. So it was no pressure at all for me in Denver. Like I wasn't in pressure situations. You know, like they won when when Bobby Turner said, "Hey, first team up." I stood in the huddle with the first team, and Terrell Davis was standing in the huddle with the first team, and everybody like, "Oh, real, sit down." Like, no, nah, this is my job. Like, I'm not. I don't play. I don't play scout team. Like I'm not a backup. That wasn't my mentality. Wow. You know what I mean? So everybody laughing like this boy crazy. Game four, of my rookie year, <laughs> Buffalo Bills. I finally get an opportunity to start. Woo. You know what I mean? And the rest was history. So when you when you look at that, my time in my time in Denver was. First off, I thought the entire NFL was like that. Like I thought every organization was as first class as as Pat mm. Bowling was running, as, as Coach Shanahan and Kubiak was running. Right. So I didn't understand that moving on, every organization wasn't like that. Every coach didn't have that credibility with his players because sure. Coach Shanahan just told you what was expected of you. He didn't harp on trying to raise you as a man. This is what's expected of you. You get it done. Right. So yeah. it wasn't any – Responsibility. Yeah, yeah. It, because yeah. I was a veteran laden team. Sure. So out there, I didn't have any pressure. I'm like, uh Brian Greasy was the highest paid player in the NFL my my year, um, my first year in, in Denver. So he had all the pressure. Right. Trevor Price had all the pressure. You know what I mean? Like I didn't have any pressure on me. I'm just here. And every week, Shannon Sharp, Rod Smith would come put their game check in my locker. Wow. Like, CP, look what you got us. And I mm. look down, and it's like zeros. seven zeros on their chest. Mm -mm. Like, oh, boy, keep on working. I'm going to keep, keep on blocking and stay out your way, get you to the end zone. Like, wow. And I'm looking at I'm looking at my check, and it's, it's 13,000. Right, right. Like, I just rushed for 150 yards. It's 13,000. Wow. You know what I mean? So my goal in Denver was to get to this money. So after my rookie year, I got cheated out of I got cheated out of the Pro Bowl. I go into Coach Shanahan, and people don't even know this story. I go into Coach Shanahan to talk about outplaying my contract. Sure. Coach Shanahan said yeah, to I me, "I think we get one." Yeah, after you're wrong. <laughs> I had already outplayed. He saw them commas, Tanner. Hey, I had already outplayed. I had already outplayed my deal after year one. So I go into Coach Shanahan. I walk into Coach Shanahan's office. I say, Coach, man, you know. We need to talk about it. Yeah. He said, Clinton, I could give you $5 million today, and you're going to be right back in here next year asking for more money. Sure. He said, you could be the first back to get $20 million. I got up. I shook his hand. I said, you know what? You're right. I shook his hand, and I walked out. That second year, I came and played my butt off, went to the Pro Bowl. I'm at the Pro Bowl. We all chilling. Hey, I got an interview. With the beat writer set up. I don't know who the beat writer is. I don't right. know nothing about this, man. I go sit down, man, talk to me one on one. Hey, you come into camp. What do you think about this? You had a great season. You're the only player over here representing the Denver Broncos. You know, like, you think it's time for you to get paid? Are right. you going to hold out? Like, I'm answering these questions. I don't know nothing about hold out. Like, man, you got to talk to my, my uh, agent about that. I had just switched to Drew Rosa House. Hey, you got to talk to my agent about that. I don't know about camp. Like I just didn't know about these things. Right. It wasn't. I wasn't being naive. I didn't know. Like this is, you know, you we're young. So we go through all this. Myself, Peyton Manning, um, Joy Porter, Donovan McNabb sitting at the bar in Hawaii. This is probably fifteen minutes. My ties. Minutes. Tony, my my ties. ties oh man, on. I'm talking I about know. my ties up, <laughs> right and left. 
we sitting at the bar, and uh, this is probably 15 to 20 minutes after the interview. I kid you not. We sitting at the bar, everybody drinking, eating wings, Mai Tais, and it go breaking news on oh, ESPN. Come on, see. And I'm like, the little ticker say, Portis, say Portis wants out of Denver. So, it, you know, it read, Clint Portis wants out of Denver. Everybody looked back at me. I'm looking back. Who is Clint Portis and who won out? Like, <laughs> wow. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just as shocked as they are. Now, Damn. the beat writer that I sat down and talked to was Adam Schefter, who wrote. At the time, you didn't yeah, know. I didn't, I didn't know Adam Schefter wrote Coach Shanahan's book. I didn't know who Adam Schefter was. That's not what I said. But Adam Schefter got me traded. So when I see Adam wow. Schefter, I dap him up. You know, it and it happened so quick. I go from Pro Bowl to. The following week was Combine. Drew called me from Combine like, I think we got some. Uh, what do you say? I said, you know what? The only team that didn't pass on me in the draft was the Washington Redskins. Wow. They didn't have a first-round pick. They traded back and got Patrick Ramsey. Wow. I said, that's the only team who I didn't felt like passed on beef. me in the first round. Wow. So I had ran into to Dan – at ESPN at the SP Awards after my my rookie year. I don't know who Dan is. No clue. I'm just sitting talking to a man about football and my thought process. He say, I'm Dan Snyder, owner of the Washington Redskins. Wow. I didn't have an hour conversation with this man. Didn't know. Not knowing who he is. Gotcha. So I said, you know what? The only place I really would go to is Washington. All right. Well, let's start there. You become a Redskin. What was that like? <laughs> coming to America. Out the gate. It was like coming to America. Out that's the what, gate. <laughs> that's what it was like. It was like, I'm telling you. It Out was the like, gate. <laughs> it was like how Prince Hakeem woke up in the day of his, the day he was supposed to get married and he changed his mind. That's what coming to D.C. was. Wow. And for me, like my time in Denver was so short. Like, people don't realize. I went to Denver on draft day, and within a, a, a year and a half, yeah, I was gone. You were gone. Yeah. Like, I was gone. So I didn't really get to explore Denver. And I always loved the beauty and the cleanliness of Denver. Like, it was a dope place. It was, you know, like, they took care of the Broncos. Right. And I thought it was, like, the best thing ever. You know, I thought that's how – Every organization was. So I come to D.C. in two weeks. You know, I the trade happens in like a two-week period, quick, fast, and hurry. I don't know anything. Like, I don't know this roster. I don't know what I'm getting. All I know is Joe Gibbs is coming back, mm. and I'm the back Joe Gibbs wanted mm. to lead. I talked to Coach Gibbs on the phone. He said, hey, do you want this to happen? Do you want to come here? I said, yeah, I want to come there. He said, okay, we're going to get it done. They got it done. Mm. I talked to Joe Bugle. I flew in. I come to D.C. And all of the pressure that I was used to responding under right. was on me. Now and I put that pressure on myself right. because I come to D.C. high profile. Yeah. I offer the success that I had already had. The locker room was in shambles. Right. Like, mm. This locker room was worse than a high school locker room. You know, like in a high in high school uh, locker room, you had that hierarchy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You like clicked up. The senior, yeah. the best player, and everybody kind of kissed his butt. Right. That's how I felt like this organization was when I came. It was a hierarchy. And for me, coming from an organization that was different, that was, that was veteran lace, that was a winning organization, sure. I come in – and now I'm I'm 22, 23, and I got to lead this organization. So it started off, I got Lavernius Coles, I got LeVar Aronson. Now LeVar is, is all where, and I got Chris Samuels. So Chris is my dog. Right. Like me and Chris, Chris Samuels was my dude from day one, just on some, on some player stuff. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Me and Chris link up, pop it off. Me and Lavernius – Florida, Florida State, sure. Miami. So, me and Laverne is high-profile offensive guys. Right. So, but I mess with defense as well. So, I'm messing with LeVar. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm kicking it with these dudes. So, 
off top, now I got to bring them together because Lavertius and Levi ain't really hang out. Right. Rod Gardner, them, like, I got to try to bring these people together. So the best way I know to bring people together is a pool party. So I'm, I'm, we pool partying up. What? We can, we can. Hey, LaVar have a pool party. I have a pool party. We putting the pool party together. <laughs> and it started bringing the team together, like, honestly, no. quickly. Oh. But the next thing is, when you talk about Smoot hadn't got paid, like, yeah. you had a lot of guys on the defensive side of the ball who hadn't got paid, who, right. who were putting in work. So you look at Smoot, you look at Antonio Pierce, you look at Lamar Marshall, Marcus Washington had just came. You know, so you got so many players that's trying to change the culture. Sure. You know what I mean? And then you got running backs, myself, Rock Gotti, uh, Liddell Betts, where we bond instantly. Right. Like, I I never in my life got into it with Liddell or Rock. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Good when dude. you look at when you look at this, like bringing everybody now, you look at some of the players on offense, some of the Smoot and Laverne and Cole hated each other. You know what I mean? Like, they hated each other at one point for something that the world don't know about. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and it was just some cracking joke stuff. Like, wow. Smooth always cracking jokes. And one day we playing against the Rams, and Torrey Holt was demolishing Smooth. Like, uh. But he talking to me and Lavernius on the sideline, like, hey, I'm about to run an eight route. I'm going to catch the ball right there. He can't do he nothing He was calling about his shots. Calling in. Lavernius on the sideline, like smoke you in it, like hey, yeah. Torrey Hope catching the ball, stop, toss the ball back. Hey, y'all better get him off me, man. I'm gonna kill this oh. dude. And this is the preseason, oh. so that my first year, mm. the offense and defense ain't ain't really mess right. with each other right. just because Lavernius and and Smoot wasn't rocking. Sure. Like Smoot cut the DBs off from from associating with the offense, and then it trickled over. Yeah. So you got to go through that. You know what I mean? And I'm rocking with Lavernius and, and Rod G, and those were two of the craziest teammates I ever had before in my life. Like, right. Lavernius used to come out with a horse collar on, <laughs> playing wide receiver, because he said, <laughs> we only run the ball. Like, we running the ball, so what's the point of me? Like, I need to be ready for that's this. Cold, like, people man, forget that's about yeah, that's all cold. this stuff. Rod Jeezy dropped a game-winning touchdown uh, against Green Bay, and was at my door like two hours later, like, hey, dog, let's go down here to Sequoia's. Like, what? Like, I'm in the house crying. Like, you mad as hell. I'm, I'm heartbroken. Yeah. Like, man, we just lost a close one. We could have beat Green Bay. And he and dropped Brett it. Farr, and he show up at my house, fam. So I say, man, what you talking about going out? Hey. He, he, said, he said, fam, man, fuck that, fuck that. This game over. I'm about to go down here and see you. Like, well, you my teammate. I'm going <laughs> to roll with you. We get down to Sequoia's. And these dudes talking to Rod G, like, I'm like, man, like, boy, it's about to go down. I'm about to have yeah. to, you about know, like, it's, yeah, it's just it's just me and Rod G, and we got in this at the time where D.C. streets was totally different. You yeah. know sure, what I mean? Like, you, sure. had, you had people with, with street rank. So yeah. it was totally different, you know. And then all of a sudden, you go to after that year, how quick things change. You I, got, I, want that, I, want that, I ain't want you to jump the gun because I was going to ask you, I never looked back. I never even watched that year. I right. was going through a whole lot of my same, you know, something different Your over there in stuff. New York. Yeah. But I remember Portis coming here, and I remember Sean following, and, and they, them boys got a chance to play together. I remember even Shockey balling in New York on the opposite side of that river playing for the Giants. And you fast forward, everything you talked about your first year here. How was it such a change when I got when I got here, regardless of what y'all went through that season, I didn't see it, didn't hear it, didn't know about it. So it was like it was like a clean slate for me, and I didn't even care what went on. What was the difference from 04 and 05? Well, this is this is what happened. First, it was me and Sean. So and Sean was coming to coming coming to his own. You gotta think when Sean first came, he came with trouble. He came with package. Right. You know, and baggage. So right. it was, although I was cool with my teammates. You talking about me and Sean rocking the way that we rocked, you know what I mean? Like, we was wide open. I remember we was like one and five or one and four, like something crazy. And me and Sean get on on Jet Blue, a flight from Dulles to fly to Miami. And we both like damn near depressed. Like, we ain't we never been a part of a losing team. Like, 
we were in we were in the liquor store like man we need to go to mine like <laughs> we need to get some life you know what i mean like we need to get we Let's bought get a away. Bottle, we bought a bottle of Hennessy Paradise i think it was like 400 500 dollars just me and Sean we got on a plane at Dulles at this time you could take alcohol onto the plane right. we take a bottle onto the plane and we get you know we get these flights no clothes, no anything. We just went to the airport. We were in the liquor store, like the press talking, like, man, we need to just let our hair down, have a good time. We fly to Miami. We go get on JetBlue. This is what what began, like our relationship totally changed. We get on this flight, me and Sean. You know, we sit on the plane to hide the fact that we got our own liquor. You know, they used to sell the little personals, right? Yeah. So we buy all the personals. And give them to the people around us to get these people wasted. Now, we're buying the personal, so of course the person selling them to them thinking, well, they're drinking right. this. But we're Joel giving everything yours. away. And we got our own bottle. So we drink Ooh. a bottle of, of Hennessy Paradise from D.C. to Miami. Mm. That's a two-and-a-half-hour flight. When we landed at 5 o'clock, we went straight to... Um, what was it before Kit? Diamonds. Ah, uh, or black gold. One or the other. We went straight. Diamonds. No, the first one that they put off of four forty one. That was that was well. The first one was yeah. That was diamonds. What says a shaker club? No, shaker at, at five o'clock. That was you call it shaker. Five o'clock in the <laughs> shake, afternoon. Shake, shake. Booty shaker. Listen, five o'clock in the afternoon. Me and, me and Sean. No one know we're in town. We go straight from the airport to there. Now by six thirty. The owner, this is, like, when we walked in, the dancers were walking in, like, doing wardrobe. You know what I mean? It's just me and Sean off in this spot. The press, dog, like, going through it, wow. like, we're talking, how, like, what we need to do, what, what, how we're going to have to elevate our game right. oh and our God. teammates right. to be successful, right? We go off in here, and we so wide open and loose, like, just in need of being release. in Miami. Yeah, like release. Just, Something refreshing. Right. Bro. The owner walks up and say, listen, man, y'all want us to close down for the day? So, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. Wow. Close down. No one was allowed in. So it's me, Sean. We had a couple partners come meet us. Mike and Rock mm. come up and meet us. So it's four of us, and we at this entire spot to ourselves. Like, by the time we make it home, to our significant others at the time. Right. Like, I dropped a key probably a hundred times trying to put it in, like, to get in the house. I, done, I scared. Stumbling. I done scared the crap out of her because she don't know I'm in town. The next day, Jackie said the same thing about Sean. Like, what happened? Like, what's wrong with you two? Like, where are you guys coming from? Like, we were just down there. So, let's fast forward. We get through that season. Immediately after, the day after... After our last game, Laverne has come to my crib and say, hey, fam, I got to get up out of here. Uh, I want to go back to New York. Hey, I had fun playing with you. I said, what? Like, wow. look, He was like, yeah, fam, I had a good time playing with you, man, but I'm getting out of here. So I'm like, what you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, this is the last game after we speak to the coaches. Laverne has come to my house and say he gone. I'm like, what? Like, how you going to be gone? Lavernius pulls off and Rod Gardner pulls up. Rod come and say, Yeah, fam, I'm done, man. I gotta get up out of here. I say, man, Rod, like, I understand Lavernius. Like, I'm just gonna shoot it to you straight. You shouldn't leave. Like, <laughs> right. don't you do it. You ain't come, you didn't have a good season. Yeah, he got more like, work to do. Yeah, I say, you know, nah, man, nah, man, I I need to get out of here, you know, stand and Everything, it was a lot more going on than people sure. knew of. So I leave. Of course, everything is over. So I leave. I go to Miami. I get to Miami. The first person who coming to pick me up is sitting right here. Wow. Santana come in the condo. He frustrated, like, man, I'm tired of this. I look at Santana. I say, what? Man, they ain't, man, I, I don't know, man. I, Say, dog, you want to come to D.C.? Ooh, wait. Say, dog, you want to come to D.C.? He was like, man, I go anywhere, man. I just want, I just want to get the ball. Like, I want to showcase my talent, show him what I can do. 
said, you know what? I picked up the phone and called right then. I called Coach Gill. I said, Coach, man, what's going on? Coach answered the phone. Hey, Clayton here. I said, you talked to, you talked to Lavernius? He said, yeah, what's wrong with him? <laughs> I said, man, I don't know, but if you want to send him back, like, we can get Santana. Like, we need to get Santana. He was like, Santana, like, do you think we can do that? You think he wants to come here? I said, hold on. Here, here, Tanner. Go ahead, CP. Here, Tanner. So Tanner get on the phone with Coach. A month later, <laughs> we got a new teammate. Done. Hello. So now the moment that go from me and Sean right. sitting down, saying, you know what, we need to carry this team. Now I got my dog. Yes, like sir. I got I got somebody. I came out of the mud that I know gonna go get it. I tell, like, Tanner gonna listen, I go tell Tanner, listen. They talking about come down and crack this safety. You don't want to crack that safety in the first place. What I need you to do is take off full speed like you're getting a go route so the corner will get out my way. That'll get you space. Let me have that safety. Don't worry about it. Oh, CP, it ain't no going back and forth. Tanner, take off on the go route. Guess who behind him on that go route? Yes, sir. I'm right behind him. That safety done got shook already. So once you get that All he wanted was one. Right. That's it. But let me me see the – I got to look at the safety already. Right. I don't need to be looking at you coming to crack the safety and trying to figure out what the corner doing. You run that corner off and just let me have the safety. That's right. Let's simplify it because they done complicated this. And that's what a lot of people didn't understand. In Coach Gibbs' offense and the reason it was so successful, I could go to Chris Cooley and he'll tell you, Chris, look, the hell with what they talking about. This is what I want you to do. Right. I'll react off of it. I, I got it. Don't worry. So that's what made a lot of my teammates, when you look at Rock, when you look at Mike Sellers, the only time me and Mike Sellers ever had an issue was when Mike ain't do something I told him to do. Right. Like, Mike, stop thinking. Let me think for you. Right. All right? Let me think for you. You do what I'm telling you to do. I'll go and take – I'll go jump on that bullet. I'll tell them, coaches, I'm not afraid to tell you that. Sure. Like, I changed this because it wasn't working. I already seen you struggle with this all we can practice. You know what I mean? So once you get those people around you that you can rock with, that you can grow with, that you can play with, it's totally different. So all of a sudden when he come in, the confident level, I just needed one. But because we drafted – I mean, because we drafted Sean, we got Chris Cooley. Now Chris Cooley coming with the, his own after they take him out of the backfield and got him lead block. Now you put him at tight end instead of H-back. So he's saying, like, what changed – well, now you're putting people in position to win. Mike Sellers was playing tight end. Right. Now you put Mike Sellers Pull in back. the backfield. Yep. You see what I'm saying? And everything changed. Now people more comfortable in natural positions. Now we can get out. Now I got something to fight with. One thing I asked Tanner about that his playing days are over, you know, do you miss the game? And he says he doesn't miss the practice or the games. He misses the camaraderie more than anything. Are you fellas. are you the same way? Or do you miss yeah, it all? You, miss, you know what? You really do miss the locker room. I don't miss the game. The game has changed so much since we left. So, like, I would I would never get a check now. You know what I mean? Well, I would uh, get explain fined that. For, what do you mean? I would get fined for anything. <laughs> I mean, I would get fined for everything. I get fined for blocking. Like, you can't crack back yeah. anymore. Like, or, I'd be sitting on the field board. Or there was a punishment. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would be sitting on the field board. Like, my final year here, I kid you not, Ten of them used to, like, try to get me into the game. The only thing I'm thinking about, man, like, I'm just finna knock somebody out because these people playing with me. Like, yeah. I'm just, like, these people playing with me, giving me three and four carries. And it's halftime. I got four carries uh, for, for six yards. Like, uh, my mindset, dog, I'm not finna play with you. Like, what you gonna do, give me 14 carries or 18 carries in the right, second half? Right. You know what I mean? Like, when we had... We got 30 passes, 30 attempts in the first half in five runs. Like, so my mindset is out of the game. Now I'm just on the field as, you know what, I'm knocking anything out the move. I just want to make, I'm just making contact to make an impact on this game. One of the things that I enjoy to see time and time again, it always happens, especially when you have a guy that you can say, hey, I'm going to bring this. And I used to ride to the games with him. And, you know, we had our little, whatever, our little, you know, our little uh, tradition <laughs> news, what they call now squig, whatever they want to call it. Before the guy low, low, low. <laughs> but Porter's was always say, you know, 
I'm coming. When you catch that thing, I'm coming. Yeah. I promise you not. I pr- hey, it happened. I remember Mike. I remember playing McNeese State my senior year and running the reverse, getting the ball from Portis. And I get downfield. He's setting up the last crack for me to cut backfield. And then now we fast forward into my first year with the skins, second year, third year. No matter whatever years we played here, this guy for some some reason he be the first guy I'm looking for on the field. Like he exit the backfield. I'm going to take out the first defender I see in your world. So I used to love just knowing that this man had the mentality to punish somebody. He yeah. had the mentality that, hey, if I'm not getting it done in the back. But that's, you know what? Tell you the truth. I speak about this vividly because I always told cat, I always told cats that they asked me, you know, um, your legacy. And, and, right. and, and I'm like, look, one of the things that I did was play football. I wasn't catching. I was going to do something else. I was going right. to find a way to be make an impact on the team gonna go block somebody. I was gonna go be a decoy. I was gonna find a way to get someone else open. You know, take two guys and let somebody have one. The guys from the U, we play football. You know, mm-hmm. and that's one thing I can always say. When I didn't have that on the team no more, mm-hmm. when Porter was gone, you were looking for that guy. Be like, damn, we're gonna go come play football. It was with the dog not going my way? Might not be going this way, but guess what? We're gonna make somebody else day. Right. You know, and that's was the guy. I always can can count on Porter's. Like, oh boy, you seen I hit that. Right. Hell yeah, I seen you hit him because I'm looking for you. I'm looking for that. You knew you know? it was coming. And at the same time, I got to get away from somebody, you know, and, you know, he, he called it. He said, we had to go crack safeties. We had to go do that. Right. You didn't find too many. I watch receivers to this day that they consider, you know, when it comes to their stats, their numbers, yeah, put up great numbers. I might not be where they at, somewhere down the line, but point out who played the total, who played the whole game the way it's supposed to be played. Right. You know, I watched guys that I looked up to for what they did catching the ball, but they didn't do that the entire Extra. game. Yeah. They didn't do the stuff behind the scenes where you have to go pick up a safety or be a decoy for the next guy. You know what I'm saying? I was always that guy that was wanting to do that, but that's the same thing you got at Porters. You got the Porters players. that at the end of the day, if I'm not carrying, then I'm going to knock somebody out for you. And then I'm going to go, and, and he's going to be the first one to lift you up and let you know, boy, you saw who I got. Mm-hmm. He talked about Denver early, and – I saw Porter's punish a dude, man, that I looked at totally different, you know, and I couldn't even tell his name right now to this day, but he was the he was the linebacker at Denver that I looked at like he was our London Fletcher. Al right. Wilson. Al Wilson. Al Wilson. Al Wilson came through that thing. Porter's hit him. He spun the different way, and he got up, and he was so shocked and so, you did that, CP? Boy, I'm coming again. Come on. And that's somebody you looked up to. Yeah, he looked up yeah, to him. But that was, like, that was the thing that's when we went back to Denver to play. Like, Al was, like, to me, people say, who are your, like, who are the best linebackers you played against? Right. Or played with? London Fletcher and Al Wilson in my top. Like, wow. I tried to crack back Al, I mean, London Fletcher when he was with Buffalo oh, or yeah. St. Louis. Like, I think I separated both of my shoulders. He didn't even see me. Like, London never even seen me coming. I had went downfield full steam ahead to come back and crack London. I think I hit London with my left shoulder and my right shoulder was hurt. I'm like, what in the hell just happened? And this man kept on going and made the tackle. Wow. So when you look at people that, that I idolize, so I'm looking at Al Wilson. I know how Al Wilson played. I done seen Al Wilson, like, come straight from the club to the field numerous times and be the best player on the field. I seen Al Wilson take – Ricky Williams and send him on that the hiatus. Yeah. Yeah, Al Wilson. Thank Al Wilson for that. All week long, Al Wilson said, you know what? I don't like this man. I'm going to punish this man. Miami Dolphins playing Denver Broncos. It was when Alinde Mari kicked them two 60-yard yeah. field goals yep. to yep. win the game. Yep. Al Wilson took uh, Ricky Williams out of that game. Wow. And when Ricky went and started smoking, he deserved it. <laughs> he I had promise to. you he deserved it. <laughs> he had if somebody to. I'll put that thing out, on him. Hey, if he somebody comes smoke seek you out, <laughs> he needed that. He, uh, he It was well deserved. One of the final questions I want to ask you is, I remember when the, the article came out where you had said you were thinking about running up in the financial advisor's spot at one point. And I remember I texted you during that. I said, hey, man, you know, everything good and, and what's going on? And you hit me back. I'll never forget this. CP hit me back and was like, hey, man, I was being honest. And you said, I'm too blessed to be stressed. And that's mm-hmm. something I still say to this day. Yeah. The way you handled all that and were super honest about everything, and somehow you took a, a negative in your life at that time and flipped it to a positive, I wanted you to speak on that 
further on this podcast because I what? thought like, you handled that I'm really so, well. I'm so far removed from that. You know, that was a that was a dark moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you get to that for any materialistic, it, it's not worth it. You know what I mean? So it was a dark moment you go through. Everybody get that feeling. Like you're just afraid to say it. Right. You you get that feeling in work. You Absolutely. know, you get that feeling in traffic where you want to prove to somebody, you know what, man, I'll mess over you. Yep. You know what I mean? So that was just a feeling I got through a phase because you were really wrong. And for anybody else, when they're really wrong, they get punished. Like, right. I'm seeing you not get punished, and I know you're wrong. You see mm, what I'm saying? It's, it's like tough. when the community got to raise you. They don't take the time to let you get to your mom growing up. Right. They don't take the time to let you get to your family. When the community raise you, when I catch you doing wrong, right. when I catch you down bad, I straighten you. Then go let your peoples know why I straighten you. Mm. So that was just the mentality. You know what I mean? But when you move past that, man, like when you you get past that darkest moment, like I tell people all the time, bro, I don't see nothing. I don't care about like I don't care about what's going on in somebody else's life. If you include me, if you put me in it, if I call Santana, what's up, dog? You straight? You see what I'm saying? If Tana say, yeah, man, I'm good, you know what I mean? Or I got something on my, hey, you want to go talk about it? Let's talk about it. I'm going to ride and rock with you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not that dude who want to go play pretend that everybody, like, if this bothering me, I'm going to address it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this off my chest because if I keep thinking about it, I'm going to think of something dumb and I'm going to put both of us in a bad situation. So I need to address you as a man. You know what I mean? And if I'm trying to talk to you to address an issue to get this off my chest, like if you want to just knuckle up and we swing and then we go have a beer afterwards, we can do that. But when you start to ignore me, like, I, I don't matter. Like, you don't have to address me about an issue that you created. It's totally different. You know what I mean? So Mm. for me, just as a man, like, being able to stand on principles in life, you know what I mean? And people will never understand you. I don't don't ask for people to understand me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't beg for people to get me. I understand I'm a different cat. I'm a different dude. I'm a different in a relationship, in anything. I just rock different. Yeah. I come and go as I please. Like, my mindset is I work so hard, like, I'm not arguing. Like, you're my safety net. You see what I'm saying? Like, when it comes to a woman, you're my safety net. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not getting into a domestic violence incident. Like, we ain't got no business arguing. You know what? Let me pack my stuff up and I'm out. Because you got a choice. And your choice is you don't have to be here with me. You don't have to deal with this. Like, you don't have to deal with my crap. I know what I come with. And I'm trying to be honest with you about what I come with. Mm-hmm. And this is to anybody. This is to doing business. This is to moving moving in life. Like, look, this is how I this is how I rock. Right? If you know you got negative intentions, don't don't include me, man. Don't even like, come around. Yeah, yeah, like don't take my money. It's not worth it. You can go get somebody else. I ain't I'm not going around to 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 hey, you know what, man? This dude is doing bad business over here. Don't deal with him. Just spare me, please. Sure. Because mm-hmm. I'm sparing you. So spare me. You don't, you don't do me like that. I'm just telling you, I done took too many L's to recover from, to move forward in life, for you to keep holding me back. Sure. Like, no. I'm showing you I'm digging out of this hole, and you keep throwing the sand back in. Then when I finally get to the top, you're going to tell me, ha man, I was just finna give you a rope. Uh, so how in the hell all this sand in my face? Yeah. Right. Well, you know, so when Very you look at you. life, man, when you look at situations, when you look at life, when you look at people, for me, I'm afraid of people. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, if I didn't rock with you, if I didn't get it out of the mud with you, I don't really mess with you. So when you see me, you see the same people around me. Yeah. You see the same people around me. Sure do. I rock with Edron James. That's my dog. Yeah. I rock, rock with Santana Moss. That's my dog. Chris Samuels is married, so our lifestyles are totally different. Sure. But if Chris pick up the phone and, and say, CP, Chris Samuels, Chris Cooley, like, they're my people. Rock God, like, these are my people. This is who I rock with. Like, I got it out the mud. I know what Rock went through as a running back to have to deal with, well, CP ain't practicing today just because he's not practicing. Right. L is kind of glitched up. So Rock taking every Every, offensive rep rep. and then take Uh, every scout team rep. uh, Yeah. So – do I have a respect for Rock Gotti? You don't know who Rock Gotti is. You and know so. him. Yeah, you know him by some something Cartwright, Rock Cartwright. Right. But for me, this is my dog because I know what he sacrificed. So mm-hmm. if Rock Gotti called me, no matter if we talk every day or not, if he pick up the phone and call me, if Freddie D pick up the phone and call me, think back. Look at Freddie D. He was on this show, mm-hmm. right? When I was here with Freddie D, how much trouble did Freddie D get into? True. 
Mm-hmm. How much trouble did Freddie D get into? True. Yep. But I ain't never had to broadcast. A, a, hey, you know what? I cover. I kept Freddie D out of trouble. You think all of a sudden he just started running into situations he shouldn't? He's grown as a man. Right. He's really successful. I mean, successful now. Right. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like when you think of all of the incidents, a lot of stuff that I got the blame for, I covered. Right. Because I was big enough. I know if if you did it, you out of here. Mm-hmm. But I want you as a teammate. I know you just slipped up. You know what, man? I'll take that. Leadership. Don't even don't even worry about That's it. leadership. But the next man ain't going to sit and say, you know what, dog? CP, CP really came through. Right. You know what I mean? When I look at Material Richardson, yeah. you know what I mean? He just had a post a couple of days ago. It kind of got me teary, uh, like, like, like teary-eyed for the fact that someone with this day acknowledged. Everybody always had the opportunity to come to my house. I know everybody on the team that stayed at my house at some point. No matter what you was doing, you stayed at my house. You see what I'm saying? Whether you came over to eat, whether you just came over to sleep because you had some beef going on within your household, or maybe you was doing this and you hey, you didn't want to get a room. Whatever it was, you had access to my house. My door was open. You see what I'm saying? So when people come back and give respect, you can find a lot of teammates who maybe didn't agree with some of the stuff I did, but you ain't going to find a lot of teammates that didn't respect me. Bad, bad mouth. You see what I'm like saying? That. Yeah. Yep. You're not going to find teammates that didn't respect me. So just because we live different lifestyles, you're going to respect me. You're yeah. going to respect my mind. Like, I was always a stand-up guy. You can't name no creep shit I done. Right. Done. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't have that flaw. I don't have that I don't have that character trait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I move. I move like to the beat of my own drum, whether Ooh, it comes different. to fashion, whether it comes to being outspoken. Numerous times I stepped to town and like, dog, why don't you say something? Right. CP, that ain't me. You know, you go back and forth. I don't do that. Like, right. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut, get out here and grind. You know what? What I just said, right. what you looking for, that you think, well, what happened with CP? Man, I just spoke up for Tanner because Tanner ain't want to speak. I ain't right. saying that. Right. Tanner ain't want to speak, so I spoke up for him. That's not your character. But the people me. the people who it was directed to, I guarantee you, when Tanner came back in, they was like, all right, Tanner, what what, what we need to do? Let's, right. Let's, right. Let's, right. let's get this. Right. Let's I shared that with you, though. Yeah. I shared, you know, I shared, shared the last word on shared, let's, I, let's get this right. That's yeah. real. Well, you know. Just to go back, chime in on that. I shared that with you about the Cowboy sure game. Did. I was pouting yeah. on the sideline. I'm, 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 I'm an, uh, you know, this is my second game with the team. TP, like, what? See, what you mad about? Right. And we ran all these damn plays, and we ain't do what you know. What Coach said we gonna do. Got that done. But on a brighter note, you know, of what all CP just said. I mean, he, he's right. He, 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 he definitely pinpointed a lot of things that why I can sit here today and, and respect who he is as a football player, one, and as a man. Shit, whether you hate him or not, <laughs> or whether you like it or not, that's him. And yeah. guess what? Do he give a fuck? No. no. Ten of them. He not don't care. One, not you two. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but on a brighter note, I can say that I caught my first whiskey flu for the oh, CP. <laughs> why you do that, man, my, like that, It was my CP. birthday weekend. On a brighter note, on my, hey, look, one of the things that I learned from him that I wouldn't have done myself because – Watched him do it, and, and it's crazy seeing a guy younger than you and and in the game. You've been in the game a little a little before, two years before, probably one year before. And I remember having a nice weekend, birthday weekend. Me and CP had three king weekends. Then we had followed that with my birthday weekend. I know me. I'm going to practice. I'm going to go to practice. I don't care what it is. I can have a pulled hamstring. I'm trying to practice. CP showed me before he can be healthy, 100 percent healthy, and. If he don't feel like doing it, he ain't going to do it. I come from off a long weekend. Birthday celebrated from Thursday to, to, the, to that I Sunday. I know how you do. And instead of just going in there and trying to fight it, because I was going to fight it, and I probably would have got hurt trying to fight probably. it. Probably. I had one of my better seasons because I took a – I said, you know what? CP like, man, you better not go in there and practice. And I went in there to the training like, man, I'm hurting. I was hurting. I, I needed IV. I need, that weekend, I needed an IV. I'm like, from what I just went through, I need an IV. You know, at the time we had John, and John said, man, I'm going to take care of you, put you in here, get your IV. If the IV don't work, I'm going to send you home. <laughs> he rubbed his hamstring. <laughs> yeah. Don't play at me like that. Don't play at me like that. It's an inside joke. Don't even ask no questions about that. But John gave me John gave me an IV, and that IV didn't help. He sent me home. And I remember uh, at the time, Rome. Rome had his, his show on uh, uh, ESPN, 
and it was like the first day of OTAs and Santana Moss just coming off his birthday weekend. Oh. He, he had a whiskey flu. He was sitting oh. home. <laughs> and I'm sitting there saying, I'm watching his ear like, I'm a fucking CP, man. <laughs> he told me to go in there and take this uh. IV. But I needed it because I went home and I recouped. And Tuesday, I came and lit it up. And it was on first year. And we jumped off nice that year. I had a great year that year. You know what I mean? Team-wise, we fell off fell off right. the ledge at the end. But honestly, I had to realize as a veteran, as a as a leader, and as a guy that was going to always be accountable for his actions, take a day off sometime. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't cool with taking those days off. I watched my dog take so many days off. I said, shit, I got to take one. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kept it was for, fresh for, game it was for day, a good though. cause. But, but you know, the thing, I, when I took it off, he <laughs> never had to worry yes, about it. Yes, sir. I up. promise you that. <laughs> When I took it off, you ain't got to worry about yeah. it. Don't worry about me. I'm I'm taking all this in. I'm cracking jokes. I'm playing around. I'm doing everything that you. I'm doing you everything the in the world right. for you to think that I'm going out here to fail this test and I'm gonna get the high score. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. man, it's been awesome having you here, bro. You know, you've been good to me too, man. Done my radio show. Done the TV thing. We appreciate you having being here and just. Bringing your perspective, man. One thing about Amen. CP, Tan always says, "Hey, man, CP is he's just himself." You know, and time, I, man. I appreciate time. that, man. Bringing you that introspective and that perspective that you bring. Great, man. Anytime. Like my man Cali say, another one, another <laughs> one. Hey, <laughs> Apple Podcast, Spotify. We need that five star review too, Tana. Y'all Wait make up. sure you give us that. Uh -huh. YouTube channel, Santana Moss Podcast, episode 10. It's a wrap. It's a Santana Moss show. Home of the Ball Number 89.